I am Chef Jennifer Struk with GRCC. I am the executive chef at Root Functional Medicine, a GRCC alumni, and also an adjunct instructor here at the Culinary Institute. So today I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie board that's super easy to put together, approachable, and is going to be great for your next in-home dinner party. So let's get started in talking about our equipment. So we have just like a plain cutting board here that you can build your charcuterie board on. We're going to do that today. You can use a wooden cutting board. You can even use a platter like this. So really anything that's going to hold your charcuterie, go for it. You could use a cast iron skillet. You could use a pizza pan, a baking sheet, anything. And then along with that, We'll dive into when we serve our condiments in a little bit, but you want to have some little utensils that go along with that. So as we build, I'll show you what you should expect to have in your own pantry and in your own cabinet to make those things work. So the first thing we're going to do, our most important part, the cheese. So today we're using cheddar cheese, brie, and goat cheese. We want to have a couple different forms of it. So we want to have a semi-hard cheese like our cheddar, something more soft like goat cheese, and then something soft again like brie. So we're going for a variety of different textures and flavors. So let's grab our cheddar cheese real quick. So when you're cutting the different blocks of cheese, you can do this in several different ways. You can do nice little cubes. You can do it in angular like triangles, something that just gives you a different shape and builds some height on the board because that's what makes it more presentable to your guests. They get excited. They want to see that different height. So for this, I'm going to cut this part into little cubes. So just taking off a little section at a time. And you can cut these to any size you want. I typically say anything that's gonna be bite size or fit on the crackers or bread that you purchase for the board. So these are just our little, little cheddar cubes. And now as far as cheese goes for guests at your party, you're gonna to wanna to do about one to two ounces per guest. And if the charcuterie board is kind of the only thing you're serving, if it's more of like a dinner, I would bump that up to two to four. So it just depends on if it's gonna be your first course, if it's going to be more of a main event, that's how much you're gonna to wanna to buy. So you can cut this into cubes and then we'll do some cool little triangles too. So the knife I'm using for this, just a regular chef's knife. Um, it's easier to work with a larger blade that's a little bit sharper than a smaller knife because you have more control over it. And you can see how I'm holding it too. I'm not just holding it by the handle like this and putting a finger on top. I tend to see a lot of people do that. We're gonna hold it like this. So it actually becomes part of like your hands. It's like another extension. So I'm gonna keep making my little triangle wedges. And it's best too to have, pull your cheese out cold and then let it come to room temperature on your board. You typically wanna serve your charcuterie at room temperature because you get more flavor from it. So cut cold, serve at room temperature. So now that we have our cheese on here, I always think the cheese is the star, so that's what I start with. Then we're gonna move our goat cheese over. And I'm really just placing it in a variety of different places because I'm going to start to build around this since the cheese and the meat are usually my most important parts. And now with our brie wheel, so super simple to cut. It comes in a wheel just like this and you can see the rind on it. We actually just leave it on there. So you don't need to take any of this off. Very easy to cut, very soft, spreadable. So I would recommend for any type of cheese, like a goat cheese or a brie like this, you can easily grab brie by a wedge, but if you want, you could use like a butter knife or a smaller utensil to start to spread it on those crackers. So having some smaller utensils there. Now with our brie, we're just gonna place that around. So I can serve like a half around there. I can play around and stack this too and get some fun shapes out of it. So serving it like that. So all different kinds of ways to just prevent or present the same cheese. 
Now, once we have our cheese on the board, that's when I move over to the meat side of things. So this is really what makes a charcuterie board because a charcuterie board has some sort of cured meat on it. So we're gonna use prosciutto, one of my favorites. It has a more mellow flavor and it's really good with fruit too. So for my prosciutto, since it is so delicate, I always like to roll it up and it usually has some plastic in the packaging that separates it because it is quite thin. So you can just peel it off there like this. And then I can roll it, I can bunch it up, just some different ways to present that as well. So I can start to build that. And just like your cheese, you're serving one to two ounces per person. Same thing with your charcuterie meat. You're looking at one to two ounces if it's something that's just at like a cocktail party or if you're going a little bit heavier, bump it up to that two to four ounces. And this is something too where if you're looking for these charcuterie meats in a grocery store, they're typically in the deli section and they come in like these little plastic packages like this. Some delis, you can order them right at the butcher counter and get them sliced. But most times you're gonna find them packaged up by like the cheese and cracker section of your grocery store. So I'm gonna do about half of this meat for this board. The board that we're setting up here right now is probably gonna serve about six to eight people. So I don't have to put out all the prosciutto at once, just kind of do it as the party goes on. Prosciutto is one of those, if it sits out too long, it can get like a little condensation on it. And we wanna keep it at room temperature, but not let it go too far. So now what I'm doing is grabbing our next meat, which is salami. So it typically comes in these little discs like this. So these are kind of fun to arrange. You can ar arrange them in shapes. You can roll them up just like our prosciutto. You can even make like little roses out of them in a glass. So lots of ways to do this one as well. And salami has a little bit of a spice to it. So along with kind of going with different cheeses that have a variety of different flavors, I'm doing the same thing with my charcuterie meats. So bunching those up, giving them some different heights. I'll set some up over on the other side. So you can see it start to come together. I have a variety of different shapes going on, different heights. Now, once our meat and cheese is on there, that's kind of the most important part, right? This is what makes our charcuterie board. We can start to fill it in with different pieces. So I have a variety of fresh fruit. I have some dried fruit. I have some pickled items. So I tend to say when you're looking for your garnishes, go with something that's a little bit sweet, go with something salty, go with something pickled. So I'm gonna put some of these little baby pickles on there. And this is great in the summertime too, if you're into doing a lot of pickling at home, you can easily use those things on your charcuterie board. So I'm gonna set some pickles up here. And really the pickled component is pretty critical because the pickles are going to help cut all this richness from our meat and cheese with that nice acidity. Now, I have some pickles on there. I'm going to start setting up the other components of my condiments, so the things that you would spread on crackers that are going to boost the flavor. Today we're doing honey, jam, and some stone ground mustard. So again, we have a variety of some sweetness, some tanginess, and it's gonna bring some acidity as well. So just looking for a variety of those flavors. So this is stone ground mustard and I'm just putting it in these little containers. It always looks a little bit more presentable when you just put it in smaller dishes like this versus serving it right out of the can. And then I have these little spoons that I'm going to put in there as well because you want your guests to be able to get to that very easily without dipping crackers or dipping meats right into the sauce. We wanna be safe about it. So this is our jam. And you can really use any type of jam you prefer any type of flavor, whatever works best for you and your palate and what you think your guests would like. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is put honey on here. I recommend grabbing a honey wands like this. It just makes it so much easier to serve and it makes it easier for your guests to be able to put it on the charcuterie that they're building. So there we go. 
So now we have our condiments on there as well. We have our pickle component. Now I'm going to start sprinkling in other things like dried fruits, fresh fruit. We have some nuts on here as well. So lots of different flavors. So I'm gonna just start to kind of fill these in. And what I do at this point is really just fill in any space that I have left on the board. I'm looking for a variety of different colors in places. So now I'm gonna put some dried apricots over here. So this is really the fun part. This is where you get creative with it and you start to make it your own board. Make it flow, make it beautiful. I'm gonna put some fresh fruit in here now. And you can do grapes, you can do berries, anything that's seasonal. You could do citrus wedges. Just gonna put these in here. And another thing too, just for a sanitation standpoint, these are ready to eat foods. So make sure your hands are very, very clean before you start touching all the foods to build your board or that you're doing it with gloves. And now, I have some dried fruits on here, some fresh fruit. We have our nuts on there. I'm going to start doing the crackers now. So another one of the most important parts, how are we going to eat all this delicious stuff without a vessel to put it on? So we're gonna sprinkle some crackers around here. And I like to do a variety of different flavors and shapes just to, again, for aesthetic purposes, build a really nice board, make it beautiful. I'm gonna sprinkle it in wherever we have some room. And again, don't feel pressured once you start buying all the ingredients for your charcuterie to put out all at once. You can keep replenishing the board as needed as you start to see items get scooped up. I tend to see a lot of charcuterie boards go very fast, so it might be possible that you need a very, very large board because your guests will eat it up right away. Just gonna sprinkle these crackers around here. And again, I'm really just covering up the original board, so by the time you're done, you typically don't even see any space left on there because it's just filled with all of the food that you're going to serve. All right, so now we have our crackers on there. We have our fruit on there. The last step, once you have all your accoutrements on there, is to garnish it. So the most important part of any type of plating is the garnish. So you could use microgreens for this. You could use fresh herbs. I have some fresh thyme that I'm going to sprinkle around. And I also have some rosemary. So not only is this adding just that pop of freshness, but it smells really, really good too. So it's gonna just scent everything even more. Put some rosemary in here. And this is nice in the summertime, especially if you grow fresh herbs, you can just get them right from the garden. Um, you could even do flowers on this. So again, trying to play into the seasonality of things. I think that's looking like a pretty good charcuterie board right there. Very, very easy to make. And that's our charcuterie board. So again, very simple. Have fun with it. Play around with it. Get a variety of different things that you really like and that your guests you think they would like as well. It's a good way to introduce people to maybe some of your favorite jams, mustard, charcuterie meats. Very simple to do. I hope you and your guests enjoy. Thank you.